Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and once again we have Michael Brave, Jayhawk Jensen, to discuss uh, Survivor Week. Uh, well, what happened in Week Three and leading into Week Four. And before we started doing these podcasts this this season, you know, we were, you know, Mike and I were, you know, reached out after like having spoken for a while, and and we both kind of agreed that Survivor could also be a very very nice distraction from other shit that's going on in, <laughs> in life. Um, and, uh, right now we're dealing with that. My wife actually just had full knee replacement surgery the other day. Um, it ain't a lot of fun. Uh, we got back from the hospital at least yesterday and the recovery is going to be, uh, you know, uh, tough on, well, obviously much tougher on her, but tough on me too. And in any case, um, this will be a nice, uh, distraction from all of that. Um, now the other thing that I would like to stress, okay. And this is going to be very thematic. Uh, as we talk about how we how we're doing is that there is more to life in the survivor pool business than circa okay there are other pools and and quite honestly they're paying a shitload uh in some of these and and we're, we're going to talk about that um so i guess i want to start with uh with how you dig i got some good stuff to report too so so tell tell me tell me how uh how you did this past week well, this was one of those weeks where if you drew up a best case scenario, I hit that best case scenario, but then you realize, oh, it actually could have been better if one of you, if one of my teams lost. And when you're in a situation where you would have made more EV if one of your teams had lost, you know you had a really good week. Um, I think last week, I know I tweeted this, that my three favorite plays were the Jets – Buffalo and Seattle, and those are the only three teams that won. Uh, it's it's that's pretty the, incredible. That's amazing, isn't it? It's pr it's pretty incredible, and it breaks down that way. Yep. If, if if I was in a hundred pools, or if I had a hundred entries left, now, I wouldn't say a hundred percent of my entries would have been on those because I definitely took a little bit other. I, I I did take a little Tampa in Las Vegas in my pool with thirty five thousand entries to start that has lots of double pick weeks and. I was willing to eat the chalk on those teams because I thought it was more important to have all of my jets available for some of these double pick weeks later, but absolutely phenomenal week. I, I don't keep um, a top 10 running list of best weeks I've ever had, but outside of winning a pool in a particular week in the past, this is, it feels like top three uh, weeks I've ever had. One comes to mind a couple years ago where, the top like five favorites all lost in like week three or four or something, but this was absolutely phenomenal. Um, remind everybody, lot, remind lot everybody, of, remind, re, wait, remind everybody what pools you're in and, and give me, give us a sense, give us yeah. a taste. How many people left and where, where are we at? So we start uh, in my standard. You want to share pool. your screen? Wait, you want to share your screen? Uh, no, I'm, I'm on, okay. I, I, I'm on something. No it's on my computer and I'm on my iPad. So in the pool that my partner and I have won three times via tie um that's the I, I did i did 10 entries of that to start the year had a very very bad start i pivoted on to atlanta sunday morning which is very unfortunate because if that had if, if if that line hadn't moved i would have been on no atlanta and i'd be in a, even a much better scenario but as it is still great spot we started with 1060 there's 57 entries left let's I have two go of them. how many i have two i have okay. two um, I have one of my friends has two, another has four, and uh, another has three. So, what's the what's the buy-in for that one? Uh, two hundred and fifty um, times a thousand sixty entries. Wow! So it's two hundred fifty thousand dollars for first, roughly. Yeah, two sixty-five awesome. mi minus uh, gratuity. And is that is that straight singles? Is that the one that goes into 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 the, into the playoffs? That's the one that goes into the playoffs. Correct. Okay. And, and again, to emphasize this, this pool, it has gone into the playoffs, well, at least all three years that I've won it, and in most other years as well. It, it seems impossible for that to happen. But again, when you get down to the end of the season, you know, if, if, if there's eight people left and four, six different people, six different teams are picked, they're not all losing. So, yeah. It, it, I'm going to get into this later about, you know, you know, the, the new aggressive strategy that I'm going to start using, 
uh, pet, you know, a pedal to the metal. Uh, you, you, you got, you got to go for it. So you have, and, so you have two entries in that. You had anything, what else, anything else? And, and then the other one, uh, $25 buying with 34,000 entries. I started with 40, <laughs> uh, 40 entries. I have six left. I lost, Excellent. I lost three on Tampa Bay, three on Las Vegas. And I got six through with Seattle. And there's uh, roughly 2,000, a little less than 2,000 entries remaining in that. All right. So we're in good shape here for me. So let me, let me, let me share my screen here. So, so all different types of pools. We're going to start. Okay. Let's start with this one. So let's just share my entire screen here. This is Survivor Grid. So this, this is one, good. I, this is good. I was nervous because I didn't. Oh, know, no. I didn't, we're killing I didn't it. Know, uh, I didn't know how you're doing uh, outside. So, of first of all, what this surgery. is, this is a, a pool that my proxy is running. It's like a circa mini pool where uh, it's a hundred dollar buy in instead of a thousand, but like the same rules as circa, yeah, with, with the million with the, with the Christmas and stuff. And it started with 336 people, and this is down to 19. So, so oh my so, gosh, so I got I got one entry in that, and basically, this one's had Saints, it's really the only path that could possibly be alive, I think, in circa right now is Saints, Chargers, Jets. Like, so, so I do have one Saints. It, it doesn't, it didn't burn Houston yet, which is the other possible one that could be alive in circus. So this is good. This is down to 19 already. I'm all, already probably not even the slightest bit worried about Christmas, right? It's like with 19 people left. Um, yeah, yeah, correct. And that's paying 33,000 for first, right? So that's, that's, that's the bad news. All right, let me tell you some good, some other stuff, right? So here's a pool that I didn't, I, I almost didn't want to enter because there's so many freaking people. It's going to chop a million. This is actually the DraftKings contest. This one has only 1.8, 188, like what, 18,000 people paying 1.8 million for first. This one, I have four entries left. And this thing is down to, uh, down to 809. Okay. So oh, wow. From 809, from 18,550. Now it's still going to obviously chop, but I got, I got four, um, I got four entries in that. And that's, uh, and that's a uh, show all 10 entries. And these are all rated right now at like 2000 per entry, as far as equity goes, you know? So, so this is, so that's good. And then we have this one. This is the double pick, like nasty pool where you have doubles in five and then starting at nine, you have doubles the rest of the way. This yep. started with 8,651 and it's got 408 left. Okay. That's down to 5%. So, so that's 408 and we got me and my partner, we have three in that. So that's, that, that's pretty good. And then the last one, this is actually kind of sick. So I have this other pool, which is a single pick pool, which is like a hybrid. It's single picks, but then it's doubles. If by like, say week 14 or 15, there's still a certain amount of people left or something, yeah, um, which is just not happening. So that started with 4,482 people. That's a hundred dollar buy-in, right? It's got 203 left and I've got nine. <laughs> oh, wow. That so is, so uh... we got, we got some fun. Uh, uh, and they're all different kinds of paths, all different kinds of, of, of variations. So uh, there, it's, it, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be an interesting run out. Let's put it that way. Um, so we'll see, we shall see. So let's uh let's get into this uh this week and we'll you know we're we're looking using Survivor Grid here we're going to rate um uh we're gonna we're gonna rate I guess by uh best winning chance I suppose you know because because you look first of all here's 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 kind of a lesson right so well it's not even that big of a lesson yet so if you rate it by like EV you're gonna see Kansas City is the top EV and the reason for that is no one's picking them because they're available like a hundred other, other, other times. Okay. But let's, let's, let's just start with just straight like winning percentage. Okay. Cause I think that the majority of the picks in single pick pools are going to come or most pools are going to come down to, to two, two or three teams, but we got, we got, we got some ideas. What, what do you think of, let's just start. What do you think? Let's, let's do the same process. What do you think of the, the highly favored teams? What do you think of? Uh, let's well, for, for, uh, first, this is, this is, we're definitely, Enter the exciting part of, uh, um, of 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 the pool, and the reason I get excited is I think this is a time where we're not exactly there yet. I use the analogy of you know this is not a poker tournament with a final table with with pay jumps. 
you know, ninth place gets nothing um, right. unless you tie right. for nine. And th- this is the time that I feel a lot of people get complacent. And yep. there, there's definitely going to be an argument where um, the, I definitely feel like the remaining field is much sharper than, you know, than, than most other years because the, the highest pick team is lost in each of the first three weeks. Um, but what happens is I think everyone thinks that and then they feel like, oh, well, I don't need to you know, play as aggressively anymore. And, and, I, and, I, and I feel like this is the time where regardless of what the, what the quality of the field is, remaining people start playing a little complacent and they play and they start playing a little bit too safe and this is the time i think to go for it not not necessarily maybe this week but you should be looking for spots to separate yourself for from the remaining part of the field as in every week i like to eliminate the, the, the ones that it's not even worth considering and you know for me those are going to be you know cincinnati um, yeah, they're like, a, you know, a four or five point favorite. But when you look at survivor grid, you know, clearly week six, nine, 13, and then this 15, 16, 17 run that I'm going to start alluding to a lot where I'm going to start valuing teams a little bit more than others if they have a really good closeout, because it's nice to have a team in your back pocket for the end of the season that can or might be able to be used in, in, mul- in multiple weeks. And that's a team worth holding on to if they have a lot of uh, placeholder spots. So Cincinnati, I'd like to eliminate them from uh, contention this week. Uh, Detroit's another one. They, they just have a, you know, a few you know, better weeks than this week, and they're only 62% to win. And then uh, I think those are the only – like Dallas, you're going to keep Dallas off. in the mix? Uh, I, I am. Okay. Um, I, I definitely think it's worth considering. Um, and then uh, in terms of the, the – I, I, have, I have four more teams written down. Like These are like the fringe teams. I mean, Baltimore is obviously a save. I mean, you know, they're like a two-point favorite, but they have some very strong games. Uh, Green Bay, you know, again, if you're going to take a flyer on someone, it's it shouldn't be a team that – you know, plays New Orleans and Chicago at the end of the season or, you know, or plays at Jacksonville. Or um, plays, then, or plays at home against Arizona in six, by the way. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That, that as well. And then I think the last one is, is, is Philadelphia. So but we can definitely just eliminate those five teams, Cincinnati, Detroit, Green Bay, Atlanta, Baltimore, Philly. And I think it's important to do this each week. It, this is my list of eliminations, but that doesn't mean that it's a hundred percent correct. Sometimes I might not even have these teams to, you know, to choose from, but it's, it's to make it easier because when you look at like 12 possible teams to pick from, you, you have to, you have to get, make that list smaller somehow. And I think getting rid of the obvious ones or the teams you've already taken first is, is, is the easiest first step. I, I, I agree with most everything you said so far, um, except I, I want to qualify with with the Dallas thing. So I think the Dallas idea is sort of dependent on on your pool size. Um, uh, I think that if you still are in pools with like a lot of people, or if you need doubles, uh, I I think you you probably want to safely to X them this week. I mean, I I just think there are way too many, way too many like late season runouts for them, like like home against the giants in 13, even like all this stuff. So I, I agree. I agree. I, I, Dallas is a pure portfolio play. Okay. Um, if, like, I don't think I'm, I, I'm probably not taking, I, I don't think I'm taking them at all, but no, actually I know I'm not taking them because I only have two entries in a traditional pool. But if I had say, you know, if I was in like maybe your type of position with, let, let's say I had 10 entries left. If I had 10 entries left across uh, traditional one single pick pools, I would I would probably take more than zero Dallas, and the reason for that is I'm not going to take only two teams, and right. I, I think I'd rather take them over the two top teams this week. It's close, but again, if I'm going to find a third team, it's going to have to end up being one of those top shelf teams, or I'm going to have to drop. And I don't know what I'd end up doing because I'm not in that position. It's harder to think what you would do 
hypothetically than if you're actually in the situation. So I'm not taking Dallas, but I think there's definitely merit to taking them in single pick pools where you have lot, lots of uh, entries remaining. Okay, so let's talk about the two biggest favorite teams. Uh, well, let's let's leave Jets in Houston for a second. Let, let's let's do San Francisco and Kansas City. Yeah. Um, so the way I look at it is this. All right, your your Dallas, as far as like just being a portfolio play, sort of, is like my kind of Kansas City. You know, like I would never like recommend Kansas City, like in general. You know, they're Okay, they're good good favorites. They're, you know, they're low owned, top EV team on the board. But as you can see, by even blinking, there's like 75 places you could use them, right? Yeah. So, right, so, right in the middle of the season. So it's a disaster from a, a future value perspective. But uh it as as something to differentiate yourself from your other entry paths, I don't think that taking the highest EV team is a bad idea. So um in 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 tournaments like that, where you have multiple entries, um, specifically ones that are single entry. Like if you have single entry pools where you have multiple entries, like I imagine I'm in, in that one that I got nine in that, in that other thing, I imagine I'm going to flick a Kansas City in, you know, just as being the highest EV team on the board. Uh, it'll also force me to be different later um, because no one else is, ta- is being so stupid yep. and taking them. So so there's that. There's that. That's my view on, on Kansas City. San Francisco is is the you know is the is the decision right you know they 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 are the 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 highest favorite team by it by a ton okay their e their EV is to the point where their EV isn't even that bad given a thirty four percent popularity rate however you know they got spots you know they are are they great spots we don't even know I mean we don't know what San Francisco is even going to be you know like they got they got all these guys out. We're hoping that McCaffrey comes back. We're hoping that that Debo comes back. We hope whatever, but we don't know. Um, but as you as you'll see when you look at Week Five, it's kind of nice to have San Francisco available in Week Five. There's plenty of weeks where it's pretty nice to have San Francisco available. So um, if this were like Week One of something, I would say just 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 completely don't play a share of San Francisco. Um, but same thing, you just you do have to respect the EV to some degree. So I have a, a little more now. They, these two are not going to be my top plays like by any stretch. Um, but I do think that that given the, the runouts and given what's happened so far and given how many are left and all this stuff, I don't think that a share of of San Francisco or Kansas City is is the worst thing in the world. So the the reason I like Dallas better and. It, now, again, I'm not taking any Dallas, but if I had more entries, I would. And, and here's the reason why. I have mentioned Dallas each week so far as a team that's very important to have for the end of the season. Uh, starting in week uh, 13, four of their six games are currently playable. But the problem is if they keep losing, then <laughs> those games aren't as valuable. And, you know, if they were 3-0 and right now, I would feel differently, but when they're one and two, is that what they are? Yeah. When they're one and two, it doesn't, again, they're going to win some games, but I want a team that I know for sure is going to be in a good position. If they, if, if they have a losing record, when they get to week 15. Look at their schedule coming up. They could be one and six. Yeah, so exactly. That, and that's, that's why I like Dallas more because, uh, for this week than those other teams. Because yeah. when, when – so even though I've talked about how we want – I want teams that have a nice run out. I want teams with a nice run out that are, have a very high percentage chance of being in the playoff picture. If they have a high chance of being in the playoff picture – then they are going to be trying 100%, and they might be up against teams that are playing 0%, like Carolina, Tampa Bay, the, you know, the teams that they're playing. But with certainty, Kansas City, in the middle of the season, we know what we're going to get. Yeah, they, 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 have a ver- they have a very, very soft schedule between 8 and 14, and they're going to be trying 100% in those games. And some of those teams – are going to be completely done with. I mean, yeah. Carolina and Vegas 
and, and the Chargers have the potential, their seasons could be over. So those yeah. spreads could be very, very, very high. That's true. Whereas – if you not you know, whereas Dallas has a stronger run out than Kansas City, it doesn't matter as much if Dallas doesn't get there with with playoff contention. So if if Dallas isn't as worth holding on to because of that, you're you're, you're betting on that them having a good playoff chance. You can get to Week 15 and hope some other teams fall into your lap. Whereas the middle of the season for the Chiefs, you're not going to have outside of injuries. You're not going to have many like eight, nine, ten point spreads fall into your lap like you will at the end of the season. So that's why I would definitely take Dallas over Kansas City this week because you are going, you know, barring any injuries, you're going to get exactly what you're looking at for Kansas City between week eight, eight and 14. Whereas in Dallas, you're hoping for that week 15 run out that you're not 100 percent going to get. So I would rather use Dallas over Kansas City for that reason for this week. So accepting the fact that San Francisco and Kansas City are not our favorite plays, you know, accepting the fact that, that, you know, Dallas is not our favorite play. We've X'd out Cincinnati and Detroit. We've X'd out Green Bay and, and Baltimore. I mean, I think that the teams that are in white are, are clearly the, 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 the best options. Okay. So. Correct. Um, so it's Jets and Houston. Now, now let's start with Jets and Houston. Okay. Um, the good thing is this, like, if you're live, you probably took one of these teams, okay? Like at some point, uh, maybe not in all your entries, okay? Depending on what you what you did. So y- your decision between the two of them, if you are between the two of them, might just be made for you. Um, if you took the Jets, for example, you know you're more inclined to take Houston. If you take Houston, more inclined to take Jets. And if you have them both available, that's great. You know what I mean, like then, 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 then you're yeah. That's me. Right. Then you're doing great, and then you have a decision of whether to, you know, to, to split your exposure or to, or to get nasty and, and maybe maybe double up on one or two of them. So that's that's. But those two certainly look like the best plays. They have you know, listen. They have they have some value, you know, but certainly less than than the others we talked about. And they're almost as big of a favorite, these teams. So Yeah, so so in my pool with 57 remaining, I, I've gotten through my path so far is I took one Houston and – I'm sorry, I took one Jets and one Seattle last week. But prior to that, I, I took Pittsburgh in both of them and then Chicago and Tampa in the other. So very, okay. very strong entries. And I, and I was looking – you know, last night on who, on who I'm going to take. You know, I mean, the answer was made for me, um, which is nice when yeah. it just it just it just sticks out. When you when I'm looking at th- this is I, I don't think I've ever looked at it this early in the season, but looking at uh, you know pick availability, the teams that are lowest owned remained are the Jets and Houston, and I, I had and I have both of them remaining on one entry, and I have Houston remaining on both. Well, so, that's the, well, that's the point. I mean, the point is that you could, you weren't, being, you're not even probably able to get to this point without having used one of them. So, I mean, but you you have some, but but it's very hard to have gotten here without without a without a Jets or a Houston used. So they're both going to be a little lower owned. So they're yeah. Both I mean, only players. nineteen, well, only nineteen out of fifty seven people left have the Jets, and only twenty one have Houston. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm almost certainly taking one of each, and then. You know, my Jets entry is going to be more important, more valuable because that entry will have Houston remaining, right. and he, and Houston has uh, playable weeks. You know, we're looking at you know six, eight, but most importantly, week twelve, where you know I could possibly get to week twelve off this Jets entry this week and have Houston still available, and you know maybe I get lucky and you know the point spreads hold and mo- and most of the remaining available Houston entries are out by that point, And I could have a very separated pick just fall into my lap. Um, so you definitely want to start looking at, you know, the, you know, the availability. Um, I, I don't think it's worth, I mean, I'm definitely going to be taking, you know, those two teams. I, I don't see any reason not to the, my only other option would be to drop, you know, to like Arizona or Chicago. Well, and, the good and, news is you took Chicago in one of yours. Correct. So I, I don't have I don't even have that as an option, but I have them available. I do have them available in one of them. But um, and, and so it, it's nice when 
when when you plan this way, it doesn't always work out. But when right. when it does work out, it's really nice. It, you, the decisions are made for you, and when the decisions are made for you, there's less regret if the pick and, doesn't and work out. Because, there's less, and there's less brain power need to be expended, which is because you can focus on other things. I mean, honestly, that, that but it's, it's also nice to ha not have any regret. I mean, it's not. I mean, I don't really in this. It's you know sometimes there's some tough. Like I don't regret what I did week one because with the strategy that I use, you know that that's just what I had to do. I had I had to move to Atlanta with the strategy that I used. Now, if I didn't look at the spreads that morning for some reason, or if Russell Wilson, you know, wasn't injured, the spreads wouldn't have moved, and I would have advanced all of my entries, and I'd be in a much better spot. But there's nothing that I did for what my strategy is that was wrong. I didn't go on any gut instinct. I just I followed, you know, what my strategy is, and following you know it, to use that strategy this week it's very it's very simple i'm, I'm going to be taking houston i'm going to take the jets and my decisions it's going to uh, brain power is going to lie in my other pool where i have a you know a couple things that I'm, I'm starting to look at for let's say you know when one of your friends has over 30 entries left out of 2000 and there's a lot of double pick weeks what 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 strategy should i use to give myself a chance to, you know, to balance well, the value. Well, let's get, let's get to it. So, so I, let's, let's talk about Arizona. Okay. Cause this is, this is my, this is, this is, this is, this is instructive. And this is one of my main decision points. Um, to me, it's not even remotely a decision in, in single entry picks that could go the distance. I think Arizona is like a tremendous play. Okay. Yeah. Um, they, they're, they're, first of all, it's like almost an impossible play to make because because like everybody just saw what what Jaden Daniels did on Monday Night Football. Um, that's why I, that's why I love it though. I, right, I and and not 2%. to mention you get freaking Kingsbury going back to to to, to get for revenge at Arizona. Ooh, um, I, I so, love revenge games. Oh yeah, so 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 it's an impossible pick to make, which which one of the reasons I like it. Um, oh yeah, and it's a kind of a cool advanced play because even people that that are willing to 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 do it. They're in in the single pick pools that might go to the end. They're going to look ahead to week fifteen, and they're going to say that they're home against New England. Okay, and the, you know the smart the smart people in the world who say, "Ooh, maybe I should, I'm just going to save Arizona until New England." Okay, and that's going to be great. You're going to think about that now, but then when it gets to week fifteen, and Arizona's seventy percent owned, <laughs> it's like uh, good luck to you, sir. You know, so yeah. So, um, uh, I uh. I think that in single pick pools, I think Arizona is incredibly sharp. I think it's uh, a play you almost have to make if you have multiple entries. Um, the 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 where I'm where I'm struggling. I'm going to talk this. Well, what about Chicago? What about Chicago? I'm getting there. Um, okay. When when, uh, when it comes to um, the, the one problem I have to talk through with my friend is that in the pool with the double picks, okay, uh, that starts in five and then nine through the end. That logic is not as important because that pool ain't getting a 15. Okay. So yeah, I'm not too worried about that. So maybe I'm just even risking too much by doing it. But but even still, I mean they still have no future value. So I'm probably gonna end up doing it anyway. All right. Let's uh let's so let's let's talk about Chicago then since you mentioned it. Um in uh in my pool, again, pool dependent, in my pool, my my kind of circa mini pool. Right, even though with only 19 left, the chance he gets the Christmas is almost zero. I think all else being equal, I think I kind of want to save him <laughs> just, 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 just in case. Um, now Chicago is is a similar type of deal. Okay, so uh, Chicago, let's see what they got. They're they're home against Carolina in five, which yep. at the beginning of the season they probably would have rated to be an eight point favorite. Okay. And now that all of a sudden Carolina after one game is like the greatest football team in the United States somehow. Um, yeah. And after two football games, the bears are like, Oh, and 15 team. I, I, uh, somehow that spreads now projected three and a half. Nonetheless, it's still, it's still going to be a decent play. And when you look at five, you'll even see how good of a play it's going to be because five is a horror show. Like assuming well, let, that. Let, 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 yeah. Let, let, let me, let me know when you're ready and let me jump in. Cause I, the answer is in week five for for chicago oh i was gonna i was gonna i was gonna go yeah i was gonna i was gonna just look at five and, and talk about that and we'll get back to five in a second and the other chicago obvious spot similar to the one i just talked about is arizona is against new england home in 10 okay so those are 
those are two pretty freaking strong spots. So I, I don't I don't think I'm getting there. But tell tell me tell me about Chicago. Tell me about week five. Uh, you can start. Rolling. So, and this is why the pools with different rules are fun because I I I don't have a pool, I don't have a pool of doubles and fives. So I, I I didn't see this until I just sorted. But if I you should always assume that you're going to advance to a particular week and 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 you know when you're making your decisions because the pool's not going to be won this week. So you're going to have to play week yeah. five. And if you look at week five, you know, you sort and Chicago oh, yeah. is right. You now there's a lot of teams right there with them, but assuming these spreads are accurate uh, in, in double pick weeks, the way people, the, the way that people think they're going to sort. And some people are going to take San Francisco and Kansas city. And that's absolutely fantastic. You're, you're going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to outlive you more through week five than you, but, you know, you're going to outlive them through week, you know, 12 or, you know, week 13, you know, more than them. But after that, and I talked about this two years ago when we had our circle week where 126 left and we wanted to have a separated pick because we wanted to keep the top three teams. Two of them played on Thanksgiving. One of them was Philly who had like three great weeks in a row. And the fourth team, was Atlanta and they were like a five point favorite and we and I str- felt strongly that they'd be around 10 percent 15 percent picked and, and they were so I, I thought we we had to drop off of them too mm-hmm. and you know we end up dropping multiple times and and I wanted to pick the teams that felt the absolute worst to pick like it made my stomach turn and we we accomplished that by picking <laughs> Indianapolis with right. a new quarterback and then Jacksonville and London and no one else did it. And, they, and, and of course, they were the only two teams that lost that week. But we, we accomplished our objective, and that was to have unique picks and save our, and save our top teams and try to create some mini separation within, you know, those subgroups. And week five is a great chance to separate because for those that are sorting by spread, Chicago, just looking on Survivor Grid, for those that look at it this way, are the fourth highest favorite that week. Dude, yeah, they're tied with a bunch of other teams, listen, but listen, this, this is what I, people are going to do. They're going to take Chicago in doubles next Chicago's year. Chicago's going to get crammed because, look, San Francisco is going to be blasted this week. Okay, Correct. Kansas City, people are probably going to want to hold, I guess. Seattle was used, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and Seattle's, so, I think Seattle and Chicago are going to be the two most popular picks in five. Um uh, so, so, so if what, you want to do that, fine, but it's not like saving Chicago for five is any great shakes. Correct. That That's why be, for that, for that pool specifically, I would take Chicago over Arizona because you're just never going to use Chicago the next week anyway. Right. And you don't, you probably, it, it really comes down to if you think it's worth having them for 10, because his, again, his pool is doubles in five and then nine, 10, 11, et cetera. Yeah. Now there is merit to keeping them for ten. Yeah. There's a lot of merit, but ten possibly could, you know, possibly could fade as well. But Jacksonville is also going to be a huge, huge fade that week. So if you're not going to take them, if, if you feel good about what you have in nine, he, 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 you know, in this in this format with doubles in five, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, it's better to take Chicago over Arizona in four. Because in five, you're just going to end up dropping anyway. I mean, I'm, I'm just looking to the lower list. I would love to – I mean, I'm liking like New England and, and Denver. I mean, you're, you're taking two two-point favorites, but no one else is going to do it. And if you if you hit a five-team parlay, over 95% of the field is out. Yep. And, and this is what you need to be looking at. In these two X weeks, there's so much fun because with everyone taking two teams – there's a lot of blood in the streets if you get the right – if you win your two games and a couple teams lose, lots and lots of people get knocked out. Because essentially you're going to double these pick percentages because everyone's picking two teams. So, like, for week four, for example, if it was doubles, you know, San Francisco, you know, would likely be picked over 60% of the time and, and, uh, and, and the Jets would be over 35% of the time. So you want to find ways to create separation, especially on those weeks. The, the double pick weeks are the weeks to create separation. And what I, what I'm starting to look at, and this is a, you know this is a little looking a little bit ahead, but week six is our first double picks week, and I'm starting to eye it because 
that is the, our next one after that is week 12. One of my friends has over 30 entries left out of 2000. He, and wow. he knows, he, he knows what he's doing. I have, I have six. So I don't want, you know, I have to, I have to fade. I have to think about what I would be doing if I were in his spot and I need to fade those types of teams on some, on some of the weeks, because otherwise I'm just going to get chopped down with him or we're going to get, we're going to get to the end and I'm going to have two entries and, and he's going to have seven. And that, and that just doesn't accomplish anything for me. I, I would rather give myself some chances to take a, you know, a big leap forward in terms of outright winning the pool. And I'm just going to assume that by, do, by taking these, what we'll call them, calculated risks i'm increasing my my ev chances and i've said this in the past you know never say never um you know i've taken underdogs on on i took an underdog on thanksgiving and i think one other time i took an underdog in a pool where you could you could you could you could have bought in you know very very late on on the first week after a slaughter on sunday of week one and, and a lot of new people got in the pool, so it was worth taking the underdog. Week six is probably a week at current spreads. I'm going to take an underdog. And I never really thought I would do that, but I'm starting to think about how it might look and what, more importantly, what I want the spreads to look like. Because it could be a very good week where, you know, if you sort by week six, the, the two big, the, the top two teams, are teams that everybody, you know, they have a lot of playable spots, Baltimore and San Francisco, you know, teams that I'm not going to be taking anyway. I'm, I'm going to save Baltimore for nine. I'm, I'm going to save San Francisco for, you know, 10, 11, 14, 15. So I'm going to have to take somebody else. But everybody else is going to, again, they're going to sort by the highest favorite, and they're going to look at, you know, Green Bay. Houston, Atlanta, Philly. Some of these teams like Philly, I'm not going to use because I want to. I want to. I want to save them for later. But I'm hoping what happens, and, I, and I'm, I'm curious your your thoughts on this. I know I haven't mentioned this to Eric yet, but what what your off the cuff thoughts are? If there's a team that's let's say like a four percent, uh, four a uh, four point favorite, if they're likely to have like a thirty percent pick percentage what are your thoughts on taking the opponent and then me taking like a two-point favorite as well Well, the good the good the good the good thing about it is is the ev calculation already already factored that in there there have there have been um cases over the last five years where that's shown up where where, um where a team was so popular that the underdog was 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 really positive ev i i I'm, i'm i'm really talking out of my ass on this one but i think it was like a sunday night game where the bears were like a two and a half point underdog to somebody um and i forgot who it was maybe a minnesota team where minnesota who are, i'm just using that as an example was like 40 percent owned or something um yeah. and chicago just because of that calculation was extremely sharp very difficult to make uh obviously uh 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 ev play so i usually let the 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 uh, the tools kind of calculate that out but yes there are Certainly some cases, and that's just the way the math works, where you get a four-point favorite that because of scarcity becomes so high-owned um, that the opponent becomes very, very high EV. It's just harder in the, in, with double picks. You know, it might show like a pick percentage of 12, but some, some of these pools, they might- Oh, end no, up it'll 40, end up being like 40, 40 for pick. example. You know, it's like- but, but, but you just don't know which one because, right. there, you know, there could definitely right. be that's some, true. you know, herd think on one team like that, you know, that Atlanta example from a couple years ago that wasn't a double pick week for me, but that would have been a week where a lot of people, if there were doubles, again, there were like three 10 point favorites this week. And then Atlanta was like a five, a lot of people like, Oh, I'm going to take one of the top, the, one of the 10 point favorites. And then I'm going to take Atlanta and Atlanta, you know, so I can save, you know, two of the 10 point favorite teams for later. Cause they're very, you know, they're very strong teams, Buffalo, Philly, uh, Dallas were, 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 were the teams. And, what ends up happening is Atlanta in single picks, they were 10% owned, but in the double pick week, they might've been like a 35% owned team. You don't know. It's hard to know though, for sure, because we don't know what, you know, we don't have the data of what people are actually selecting, you know, on these sites where the, where, where, where the data is drawn from. But I feel like 
you know, I'm, I'm not making, I'm not pre-making this decision. I'm, I'm trying to think about what, what kind of spreads and what kind of range I want for there to be like, what, what type of gaps between, because the win percentage look pretty similar, but you know, Baltimore and, and, and San Francisco are like nine and seven point favorites. And then everybody else is a four, you know, I feel like that, that'd be a pretty strong uh, position. Uh, it'd be a very strong position to, uh, to swing for the fences. Yep. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up? Uh, I guess, I guess the last one, I mean, I agree with Arizona and Chicago. The, the, the the only other one I had, you know, it would be uh, would be Las Vegas. I, 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 I mean, I feel like they there, you know, there might be argue you know, well, for the same reason little... they were for the same reason they were a good pick last week. You know, like, they, they were you know they they were their EV was just okay, but they had no no spots uh, in the future. Um, now it turns out Cleveland is pretty bad, so they all of a sudden the Vegas is kind of live this week as well. Um, but I mean, again, that, that's ob- it's obviously very, very, it's obviously a very fishy play. I mean, to drop this far. Um, yeah, but, I agree. that's I just mean, that's just the only one. I mean, yeah. I, I I might do it just in, in in the one with all the double pick weeks because again, I, I'm I'm more setting up. I'm not saying like this is a plus EV play. I, I'm I'm hoping it becomes a plus EV play by, but be, because it's looking comparing. Like I'm comparing Arizona, Chicago, and Las Vegas. And my doubles are 6, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17. And, you know, what teams would you rather have? Like Las Vegas is really, unless they go on a run here, it's just not a team that I would need in those weeks. Because if, if their season's over, it doesn't matter if they play Atlanta or Jacksonville. They're, you know, they'll be like a two or three point favorite in the, in the, in, you know, because their playoff chances are over. But the only reason I would consider a team like that is if you're setting up the, these double pick weeks to hope to make – you're eating a lot of EV now, but you're hoping to make it up later because you feel that not using Arizona or Chicago would offset the EV loss by dropping from them to Las Vegas. And, that, and that's that, that's the fun part about playing survivor for me is that is this, you know, there's, there is, there's plenty of guesswork still, not just guesswork is it's just allowing the season to play out and seeing what ended up being in hindsight, the best play. And, and, and then sometimes playing to hope that so- something like that works out. Like if I were to take Dallas this week, if I'm not going to in my single pick pools, but if I had more entries, I might decide, you know what? I'm going to bet that Dallas is out of the playoff race by week 15 or, or very close to out of it. And I would rather use them when their season is still in contention, you know, for, for putting themselves in, in, in the playoff run. And this is a week to do that because the, the, the way I'm looking at it is Dallas is what a five and a half point favorite this week at, at the Giants. If they were playing at the Giants in week 17 and both teams were eliminated from the playoffs, that spread could pop, you know, that spread might be a pick them. Yep. Um, it, it just, it, it just might be. And if that's the case, which I think it would be, it, it definitely wouldn't be as big as this, but if they were in contention and they were playing at the Giants later the season, it might be a nine point spread. So I might, I might take the, you know, Dallas betting that they're not going to get there. And then if that were to happen, those that save Dallas again, I'm I am saving Dallas, but it's it's just something to think about when you're deciding on a portfolio of picks. Unless you want to, you know, drop down to Arizona, Chicago. I just I don't think Kansas City is a play at all, and San Francisco. I don't think it's a play either, but I prefer them over Kansas City. But if you're not going to take either of those teams, and you don't want to, and you don't have you know, the Jets or Houston, you, you, you have to take somebody else and you're either going to drop to Arizona or Chicago, or you can take Dallas. Now, if, and, you're li- if you're alive in these pools, you have to have one of those available. No one's used both Houston and the Jets. No, that's true. But if you have a portfolio of picks, I mean, okay, like okay. you, you, you right. I mean, you, you, cause what if you want to save one of those teams no, 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 in, in the end? Want, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I just think Dallas is better than, than, than San Francisco or Kansas city, yeah, but well, that's fair enough. 
right, if, so you, if one, you don't want to take only those two teams and you don't want to drop to Arizona, Chicago, I think I do prefer Dallas up. But again, if I make it far in the season, I'm going to have all of my Dallas available. I want to make that very clear. And I'm going to be saying, this is why I saved Dallas. But if I had 10 entries in this pool that I have two, I would have used some Dallas this week. I, I would have. With 10 entries, I would have used a one or two on Dallas for sure. Well, the good news is that this doesn't apply to anyone because no one's got 10 entries left in any of it. Um, so let's uh, – let's, uh, one other sweat I wanted to share with you guys. Again, I'm not going to get too into it, but I, I may have mentioned this before. So I'm playing the Circa Millions thing where you pick – five teams a week against the spread. And the my entire goal is to just get contrarian, you know, just presume there's no edge of beating the spread, try my best to figure out who people are playing and try to go against them. And I, I try to like judge my results, not based on the results, but based on, you know, how, how unique I'm, I was getting. But now, unfortunately, I've actually done pretty well and I've run hot. So the way this thing sp spreads out is that, they, they pay out for, you know, the whole season. And they also pay out based for each quarter. And the quarter actually ends this week. And I'm just in contention enough that I have to worry about it. So th these are every, everybody's scores. So the, 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 the guys in front are 13 and two and 12, two and one. And there are 21 people try to 12 and three. I'm right behind these guys. So I am 11, three and one. Okay. With one week to go in the quarter. Okay. It's your, is it first only? No, they pay the top five in the quarter. Okay. So okay. I've got to beat not only the guys that I'm with, right? But, 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 but I got to, I got to eclipse like these guys who are a half game ahead of me. All right. Now, being a half game ahead is not a big deal, but having 21 guys a half game ahead is, is, is rough business. Okay. So the, the thing is, is that there, there's decision. no, the, the good thing is, is my, my strategy this whole season is just picking the ugliest teams and there's no way anybody's picking like against the spread. Um, and that's worked out pretty well. But the good thing is in this particular week where you have these guys up at the top trying to protect leads, that they're yeah. probably going to be a little chalky, you know? Um, oh, 100%. They as should, I might be. Should, you know, yeah, I don't know. I would, I would be too, I, especially I that know. guy in first, yeah. So I am going to like just even even put – more of a hammer on this, you know, and, and try my best. And listen, I, I'd be playing this way, playing for the season anyway. Um, and the, 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 I already know you guys just pick the teams that just nobody in their right mind would play nowadays, regardless of spread. So I'll probably end up playing like the teams that have looked the worst, like the Jaguars or uh, maybe the Titans or something, or, 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 uh, and I got other, other ways to separate this stuff. Even the, the Browns are terrible, you know, I don't know, maybe, but, but the point is, is that, the one really weird decision you always have to make in this pool is whether to bet the Thursday game. And, and, and there's, there's, there's pluses and minuses. The big plus is that it is by far the lowest known game on the slate. Okay. By, by like tenfold. Okay. You get like a hundred, hundred people picking this yeah. game and a thousand, the others, but the bad news is there's a reason for that. Okay. The reason for that is if you play the Thursday game, you have to lock all your picks in now. OK, um, and so you don't get to see any of the line movements or anything that or any of the injuries or whatever that can happen between Thursday and Saturday when you could put the rest of your picks in. So it's a tough call to make, you know, whether I mean, yeah, I, could, it is. I could literally just like throw a dart and pick one of these teams tonight and it would probably be the Giants if I pick one. And and just if and, and listen, I look at other sites for consensus rankings and stuff like that, and they they correlate OK. With Cirque, I've been doing this for now for a year trying to figure this out. They correlate, like I look at Vegas Insider, I look at covers, I look at, there's a lot of places that they kind of track consensus, but there are some Cirque players that play this way, although not as many as you think, and it correlates okay. Um, but uh, how many uh, how many people are, oh, so you're behind the 12 and three group, right? You're, yes, you're like, I'm a half what, game behind. You're 12, two and one? No, 11, three and one. 11, I'm sorry, 11, three and one. Yeah, yeah bad math. So, how many people are in that group? I can't worry about that because you know what I mean? I got to beat them anyway. You know, it's like, um, I mean, I have to go four and one, five and oh, regardless. Um, have you decided if you're going to go for it yet? I have not. Um, I have not. I have until I have, I have like a couple of hours before I have to ferry about Thursday. Um, can, can I tell you what I would do? Yeah, if yeah, I yeah. would go for it. Go ahead. So I played Greg Rich's, uh, confidence pool with, with point spreads, uh, several years ago. Uh, you picked 10 teams. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he I, still I'm, does I'm this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I didn't know if he still did this one. I only did it one time. So 
I did it one year and I was in like uh, through like week eight or nine, I was in like third place. And what I decided to do was I'm going to go, I'm going to take the worst. I'm going to, I'm going to take the worst line movements. Right. Right. For maximum separation. Yeah. And I ended that pool in the bottom 10. Right, right, I just right. I, 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 I just yep. stuck with I didn't even care because I knew if, if it worked for two weeks, I could have like the exact opposite happened than what happened the first, next two weeks. Like I went like two and eight, like back to back weeks. But if, if the exact opposite happened, I would have really I, mean, I would have I, I would have been first by a lot. I mean, no one I mean, no one else was doing this. I would you know, if, if you're going to go for it, I, I think just taking the absolute worst line movements is has to be the right play. Um especially across you know the uh, uh key numbers so and the just, point is and, so just, so by that logic i shouldn't do anything thursday correct because then you're not gonna you're not gonna have you're just not gonna have enough and then right. if you do if you do take the game tonight my, i haven't looked at what the pick breakdown is oh, but yeah no, my, it's, it's it's, it's two thirds for for dallas yeah i mean that's the projection oh, i mean I don't oh know. wow okay my goal would be my, my, my assumption would have been to take dallas tonight but obviously oh, yeah, I, so I, I didn't i'm probably play. not gonna okay. do it but to give you an idea of like how hard Survivor is, so Greg, the Gregorich Survivor pool is like pretty freaking sharp. That's the one I showed you the other week where where uh, where uh, Seattle is everybody's contrarian play was like by like a twofold the most popular play on Gregorich, yeah. right? So so that that one has 185 uh, Survivor entries. I'm well long out of it. It's got five left. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> That's what happens, you know. That's incredible. Um, but okay, so I'll, I'll figure out what to do with this one. But uh, listen, that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody, and uh, let's let's get it. J E T S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Jets right. Later, guys. <laughs>